using a hemocytometer and serial dilution. During this practical, you will be required to use a microscope. Here is a brief refresher on the use and operation of a microscope. Always check the power cord is inserted properly and the device is turned on. On this particular model of microscope, the Motic B1, the light intensity is controlled by the wheel on the base. The microscope is focused by a two-stage wheel at the side of the machine. The outer wheel controls the coarse focus and moves the stage up and down in large increments, whereas the smaller inner wheel controls the fine focus and moves the stage very, very gradually to achieve fine focus through the width of a slide. The amount of magnification is controlled by the choice of objective. There are four objectives on this microscope. The red objective is a four times magnification. The yellow objective is a 10 times magnification. The blue objective is a 40 times magnification. And the white objective is a 100 times magnification and is used in an oil immersion. Coupled with the 10 times magnification of the eyepiece, this will give a total for the magnification value. Releasing the silver grub screw below the eyepiece turret allows the eyepiece to be rotated and conversely, tightening the screw locks the eyepiece in position. Moving the microscope stage to locate specific items on a microscope specimen is achieved by the stacked rotational controls underneath the stage itself. The upper control moves the stage forward and back and the lower control moves the stage right to left. Underneath the stage is the iris diaphragm control. This will improve contrast and visibility when viewing your specimen. Precise location of specimens can be achieved by using the micrometer scales on the top of the stage. Slides are secured on the stage by using the slide clip. Open the slide arm and the spring loaded clip will close on the slide holding it securely in position. Locate the specimen on the slide by eye rather than using the eyepiece. Serial dilution. To carry out the serial dilution, the following basic equipment is provided. A 10 milliliter syringe, a one milliliter syringe, a marker pen, a beaker containing yeast solution and distilled water to further dilute the yeast solution. A stirring rod is also provided in the yeast solution to prevent settling of the suspension. The test tubes in the test tube rack should be clearly labeled using the marker pen. For the purposes of clarity in the video, printed labels have been used. Before drawing up an initial sample from the yeast solution, ensure that it is stirred to ensure an even distribution of the yeast particles throughout the suspension. Draw up 10 milliliters of the fluid, ensuring that the bottom of the plunger is at the 10 milliliter marker on the syringe. Deposit this sample into the test tube marked one. Then using the one milliliter syringe, draw up one milliliter from the initial sample and deposit this into the test tube marked one in 10. Once again, ensuring that the bottom of the plunger is on the one milliliter marker. Mm -hmm. 
Using the 10 milliliter syringe, draw up nine milliliters of distilled water and add this to the one milliliter of the sample in tube marked one to 10 ratio. This gives a total sample volume of 10 milliliters, ensuring a one in 10 dilution. Repeat the process, but this time draw up the initial one milliliter volume from the tube that is already diluted to the one in 10 dilution. Once again, adding nine milliliters of distilled water to the one milliliter sample, ensuring a one in 10 dilution. This will give a one in 100 solution. Repeat the process from the one in 100 dilution and continue until the series is complete. A hemocytometer is a specialist gridded slide. It is mainly used for blood counts, hence its name the hemocytometer, but can be used for cellular counts or bacteria counts. Before use, clean the hemocytometer with some ethanol on a lint-free cloth. Deposit a drop of water on each of the gridded silver sections of the hemocytometer. Carefully pick up the cover slip and slide it into position, exerting minimum downward pressure on the cover slip itself. Underneath the cover slip, the water will spread out into a film. Ensure the film of water reaches the edge of the cover slip. During this demonstration of capillary action, I will be using dangerous blue. Rest assured, no technicians were harmed during the making of this video. From the appropriate sample, take a drop and place it at the edge of the cover slip. The water already in position under the cover slip should draw the sample evenly under the cover slip itself and across the gridded section. Before examining under the microscope, allow the sample to settle for around about one minute to avoid any motion in the sample itself. After settling, the sample should appear something like this. Filling the hemocytometer with a yeast sample. As in the previous demonstration, first clean the hemocytometer with ethanol and a lint-free cloth. Before placing the cover slip on the hemocytometer, add a drop of water to each of the silvered gridded surfaces. Then slide on the cover slip with the minimum of downward pressure. Ensure the droplet of water spreads to the edge of the cover slip to allow capillary action to draw in the sample underneath the cover slip. 
Make sure that any excess water is discharged from the pipette before drawing up a sample of yeast. Draw a sample of yeast into the pipette and discharge it back into the test tube. This ensures that any settling of the suspension will be counteracted by movement. Then gently touch the pipette against the edge of the cover slip to allow capillary action to draw the sample underneath the cover slip. Gently dab away any excess liquid from the surface of the cover slip itself. This is a microscope view of the yeast sample on the hemocytometer. The objective used in this case is the 10 times magnification. The squares indicated by the yellow box using the 10 times magnification objective become almost the entire field of view in the next slide using the 40 times magnification objective. Viewing the sample with the 40 times magnification objective allows a count of the yeast cells to be made accurately. The northwest rule is applied. This means that any cells overlapping the middle of the three grid lines at the edge of the square are included in the count if they are on the left hand side or the upper side of the grid square itself. Those overlapping the middle line of the three lines on the bottom or right hand edge are not included in the count. In this example the cells included in the count are ringed in pink and those not included in the count are given a black cross. <laughs>